it's a rarity. It, the hero normally gets shut down early, but this is why it's drafted when he gets to play games like that. It's one of the best anti carries <laughs> as an off laner. Alright, so Slaughter will be denied to IG. They do like the the Slaughter lifesteal, it's a very classic combo. You can never go wrong with the corrosive haze, not to mention with a blink initiation, it can destroy you. So maybe like you, you talked about the Ricky, maybe IG could still go back for that. But otherwise, uh, for a second pick. Hmm. We have we have seen actually a bit more pass three slaughter, so they still could have room for two more supports on the side of VG. Yeah, it's a very open ended pick still, so something that doesn't give away too much to their draft is always nice. And this is a pretty strong support duo if you do want to run it. Slaughter likes the extra mana more than most. And again, it's just very annoying for the lifestealer when he runs out of rage. Because you don't want to have to focus the five position hero because it's frostbiting you and killing you with an ultimate. You want to be focusing the cause. And sometimes you can get drawn away from that. I don't know, I like the CM here. Reserve time. Um, I'm just thinking whether VG Gaming do pick up the, the Sven again. Because it worked out so well for them in the last game. And with Lifestealer, you know you get Corrosive Haze with God Strength coming up. You, you could still tear apart the Lifestealer quite easily, and you know, Warcry is also very useful against Lifestealer, so you never know. That, that still could come back in. But IG, what will they choose as that taxi for the Lifestealer? That's all I'm really concerned about right now. And, you know, Storm is still left in the pool, but it's too early to pick him up. Um, Earth Spirit, Ricky, Monkey, all kind of work as for support vehicles early. They go back for the Magnus again. They really love their Magnus, don't Dire they? Dire Team back. I can't blame them. The hero is very, very strong right now. It's had a few small nerfs, but nothing that actually matters. Balance in all matters. And okay, hopefully we'll see this time. Radiant a bit of a switch Team around. Back. But VG Gaming, they take out the Warlock. Of course, that'd be a disaster. Like a ma an RP into everything else thrown up at the Warlock. That's always like... It's enough to traumatize you for a bit. <laughs> and into the second phase of the vents, IG, who did it look to take out? I mean, if you're them right now, you're also wondering whether the slaughter is the pass three or like a four. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, you've got no inkling to know that. The only thing I'd say is that slaughter is uh, very unlikely back. to be able to lane against Lifestealer plus one if it's a strong plus one. So if you plan on picking a really strong support, you might be able to dissuade VG from putting it as an off laner. But it's very open-ended right now, as far as uh, where the Slider goes. Remaining. I would be surprised though if VG let the Ricky through. Ricky and Magnus is... Uh, it turns this 4 position hero into a complete and utter monster. Reserve and time. the way Bobica plays it is quite farm heavy. He roams a bit less than most of the s Rickies I see. He prioritizes getting his items up. Hmm. And it does so much damage. Very Radiant good call. And there we go, the Ricky band out. <laughs> TA ban immediately. I actually would have thought IG would have picked That's it up. That's a smart ban. Yeah. But, okay, why did they ban it out? I thought you could have, like, you know, you could have considered picking it up for yourself. But then again, I see Slaughter staring me in the face. I'm like, okay, yeah, you don't want to give that away. It's just a very hard hero for Life Stealer to deal with. He doesn't shoot through refract at all, so you'd have to worry about counter picking. Mm -hmm. And Life Stealer is not that tanky. At least not to Corrosive and TA. That's true. Feels weird we calling it corrosive. Time. Can't we just have amp back, please? It was so much easier. <laughs> Ice frog, please. And Windrunner, you know. Oh, I think there was like a copyright issues with Blizzard. Yeah, yeah, but it's still all bullshit, right? When you said a name for like eight years and then it gets changed, it's like what the hell? So pit lord or underlord? <laughs> um, I. <laughs> I didn't play it that much in Dota 1, so I'm going with Underlord quite easily. But okay, oh, well, don't it's, forget it's Rave still King. Pit Lord. Don't forget Rave King, Skeleton King. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's... Never forget, never forget PQ, never forget the real, the original King. Well, that is true, he needs his Arcana. Ten for the original King to come back. Wait, wouldn't it be like a disaster for pubs? Can you imagine every pub would be like, Rave King! Remaining. That already happens at like 2k MMR for jungling, right? Is it? I, I thought dude, I thought in 2k I thought in 2k they still go for like Legion or some or Nature's Prophet. These kind of crazy picks. Um, I don't know. People like Grave King. Oh, it's a butt hero. 
It's nice and easy. I mean, chat's gonna kill me for, for saying this, but okay, so who are the 2k players in there who can tell us the, the, the popular junglers? But anyways, back into our draft. Shadow Fiend coming up. I like the negative armor strat coming up from VG Gaming. Presence of the Dark Lord of Corrosive Haze is disgusting to play against. Lifesteal is gonna have a tough time. But the Silence of Pick, however, this, this interests me. It, it seems a bit risky. Uh, there's no clear reason for them to pick it up from uh, like VG having a huge team fight ultimate or anything yet. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be one of two things. It's either a hero that can actually contest Shadow Fiend in the lane if they pick a roaming hero and cause him to pretty much jungle from minute 3 or 4 if he doesn't get help. Or it's just a support that can mask the initiations of the life stealer plus one and just secure the kill, start the fight with a pick off and then look to snowball your advantage and clean up. I mean, I've said it before, Storm Spirits could still coming in. Wow. VG is like, we want another 20 minute game. And they pick up the Arisa plus the Slaughter and the Shadow Fiend. This is a life stealer's nightmare. Pretty much. And Silencer isn't. It's not bad against Ursa if you're actually the one initiating on him because he can't ulti off the Silencers. Mm -hmm. Like he can with stuns, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's team not a fun lifestyle game. The and Silence it doesn't feel like he does much right now. The Tinker Pick is unique. I mean, IG could always go for the Bounty Hunter as a replacement to for the Ricky. Bobaka did play it just now, but I don't know. It looks like the. Ten seconds remaining. Uh, it feels weird. Like you pick up the Tinker and Silencer. Besides the Magnus, how do you, you you need your life steals to have a way to just really initiate on. They don't have good stuns as well, for that matter, and you really want to be able to chain an Ursa down before in case he gets his ult off. Oh. What the Tinker pick says to me is we have lost this draft, we have to change our game plan. Because if you look at the free heroes against what Vichy had us for, mm -hmm. I don't see them winning that game with their game plan. Unless they had some major outplays or a really pocket pick. And now they go back Five to the Tinker as a way remaining. to stall the game out. So the, the Magnus, Silencer, and Lifestealer can like kick in. And Ursa's less of a counter to Lifestealer as the game goes on. Shadow Fiend, sure he scales well, but not as well as Empowered Heroes and a Tinker. So I think that's their plan. I'm not sure it's the best plan, because I normally opt for Synergy personally, as opposed to deviating from your draft and just saying, okay, well, we're screwed. But we'll see. Their that last right support has a lot of work to do, because no one moves on their team. They're all farming heroes. Indeed. Lifestealer like, can move at like 6-7 minutes, but before that, no one moves right now. And Silencer is a really Night greedy hero, so okay, they go back for the Night Stalker. Um, this one, I will have to say it's a Night Pick, because, because VG Gaming have played pretty much Night Stalker previously, all the time. And if they gave that away to VG Gaming, it gives them, once he gets an axe, you know, it's very easy to find a Tinker. You won't need Tinker Wards anymore. And when you control the map with a Night Stalker on VG's draft, it's crazy. So I can see why they picked it up. But then again, you talked about having someone who roams. Night Stalker does that as well. Yeah, it could be as much of a deny as it is a useful pick for them. Because mm -hmm. if you look at what's left in the pool as far as quote-unquote vehicle supports, there's kind of just Bounty Hunter and Monkey King. Which, Night Stalker... It feels like it fits the game slightly better to help their lanes. Mm -hmm. That being said, I still think it's a bit of a stretch, and Vici's draft looks way more secure, way more stable. I'm just going to believe in the Tinker pick. I'm not a fan of it right now because. I wish I could. Uh, same. But I can't. Like, Tinker is one of my favorite heroes. I studied Chains, Tinker, and Van for like uh, quite a while, but. Uh, you know, sometimes it feels like it's not quick enough for the meta. It's a very situational pick, but then again, we've been proven wrong several times. I feel like when Tinker thrives, it's when... If you replaced the Shadow Fiend with Tinker, Ten that's the kind of draft remaining. I'd look at Tinker and be like, yeah, this hero's gonna work, because it has extremely Five mobile early game supports, it has a carry who wants to move around the map, create a lot of space in fights, draw the attention away from the Tinker. IG, they have very stationary, farm-based heroes. They don't have a clear initiator at all. Magnus is not an initiator. For 
unless you're content using RP on a single hero, he's not really initiating hero. They, they need to, the fight to kind of happen just through vision, either being there previously or Nightstalker vision, or like heroes just kind of waddling together. It sounds kind of dumb, but most Magnuses wait for the middle of the fight to s start their stuff. Okay. And okay, before we get into this, right? yeah, it does, it does. I actually agree with you. On your point as well. And okay, let's look at. I'm going to introduce the teams now for IG on the radiant side. Bobocar playing on the Night Stalker OP, playing on the Tinker, burning on the Life Stealer Q on the Silencer with XXS on his Magnus. For the Dire side, VG Gaming and on the Ursa, Chuan on the Crystal Maiden HYM. On the Slada with Ori playing the Shadow Fiend. Last but not least, you have Yang playing on the Centaur. So, okay, before we enter this, like, I just want to ask you. I just want to confirm, actually, not ask. Do you favor VG Gaming's draft into this? You do, right? You you would favor VG for this. Like, seventy-five, eighty percent. Damn. <laughs> I I feel like it's a major outdraft. And okay, like I will still. I'm I'm just gonna favor IG just for entertainment value because I want to believe in a Tinker pick, Tinker Magnus, and if he gets an Agnims, I feel like he can actually stall the game out long enough at least for them to come online. But then again, we did say that was possible in the previous game. Look what happened. Uh, I mean, Ooh. it's just the change of uh, game plan for them. Mm -hmm. VG VG smoked up. They want to contest this rune. The battle. Oh, there we go. They get the frostbite immediately, but no more crush, and they just steal the bounty. Unit. That's still worth it. Oh, well, it does flag that they're aggroing, mm -hmm. so I actually have a bit more time to adjust. Oh, they're, to they're this. adjusting right now. Look, let's look at it. XXS is like, okay, I'm on the way. Yeah, he knew already. He had a TP from the start, so they probably won hard reading that they'd go aggro, but they were very well prepared for it because they're moving so quickly. And I think this is a really good call from VG mm -hmm. because there's no real reason for them to not. The, their lane just suits better this way. Mm -hmm. And Centaur with a good start early is, you know, very scary hero. He would do fine in a one-on-one -on -one matchup if he was given it. And if you're in your safe lane against a duel or a tri lane, it's a lot easier to get levels. And this hero has proven what he can do with it. Maybe not to the same extent as the Axe last game, but, you know. We'll see. So Tinker obviously having the advantage with the laser early on. Gets less and less depending uh, how much pressure the supports put on the SF. Gets easier for him as time goes on. With like the raindrops coming in so he can't die as easily, etc. I, I was interested really to see that early. they didn't actually put their own aggro trial in for the set of IG. They decided to run the dual lanes. So, how do you feel about that? Is that a right move? Just putting the silencer with the Magnus? I think it's a better split for them overall because if silencer goes top, what does he actually accomplish? The centaur's still either going to be under the tower when the creeps push into him mm -hmm. and still get his CS and you're going to split the experience between three heroes or in this way he can manipulate the lane force the supports to stay down here because the CM's already gone jungling realizing she doesn't need to be in this lane and it can really annoy her so if you get the side camp pulls so he actually accomplishes something here and then Slider's not running mid and harassing the tinker because he feels like he wants to be bottom to stop the pulls for the Ursa and guard him so he's at least accomplishing something bit of a skirmish going on both of them dueling up but Q says I have the double damage are you sure you want to hit me Oh my god, is that first blood? Oh, he gets- One health. That was like, what, 40 HP? No, one. Literally one. Oh my god. Alright, that was a really close shave, and... Looks like HYM is back for round two. Hello! Where are you running? And the S is coming. Slowly but this. surely. Body blocks, Can't body, body block with sprint, bro. No, no, the sprint's off, the sprint's off. But he's gonna make it in it time to try. Oh no, he eats him up, and is like... I can't get plus two from you, but I'll My take first blood. So, nice and easy kill. Blood. Worth it for him. Yeah, for sure. Nice to see him move. Help his support out, net the kills. Wobbaka just messing around with the pool. So, with this double wave, or at least the full wave coming in, this is pretty big going the way to burning.
Yeah, link control is a big deal in these situations. The higher up you are, the more prone you are to bad things happening. And you can actually zone the center out a tiny bit if you bring the silencer up here. But I feel like they're running into a lot of problems already. You just look at the VG draft, like, they understand what's going on. You have a crystal maiden who's just free farming a jungle, not a care in the world. Level two and a half ready, three minutes in. And this Tinker, no lockdown for him whatsoever. He's 13 to seven. I mean, he's kind of even with the Shadow Fiend, given he did miss out a few CS during the level one to two stage. And hold on the back. Foot. Here you go, the crush looking for the raises with the frostbite. That should be the kill into OP. Don't tell me he gets out! Okay, no, just kidding. HYM gets the cr gets the bash at the very end. And Q. Looks like he wants to go for the kill here onto HYM. Nice sidestep from Bobaka. Do they have enough damage to kill HYM? Oh, the high ground miss! The tango is doing enough work. He doesn't need to deny him, does he? 10 HP. Uh, not even close. Now they get to Shrine off. That's actually such a big deal. They get the kill on the Tinker there and nothing bad happens. Mm -hmm. It's just more Vigi going in Vigi's favor. So, 2 and 0, 4 minutes and a half in. Pretty, it's pretty good. Like, now you leave the Ursa, the Magnus alone, and has the level advantage. The main problem in this game is if you look at how IG kind of match up. Mm -hmm. uh, 15, 25, 35 minutes. Th their answer to VG is be ahead, buy an item, or have some kind of advantage to oh, allow main. yourself to say they the have crush, a misses the crush, XXS, they need one more hit. One more hit. Oh, jukes around the trees. And okay, they get the kill, but he does get a ton of damage out, and HYM will be forced to go back. Yeah, not close enough to tranquil, so. It is still. Come to the lane, get a kill. Worth. No shrine. Tron though, he's gonna get smoke ganked. Oh, Tron. They came from behind, and Tron will go down. Plus two, going to Q. Shadow Fiend will have to back up, but looks like they wanna dive this. They do get the void slow onto Ori. They have the laser, do they? No, they do not, but Ori will be going down to Bobaka, who gets a double. Is he actually dying under the tower? No, he gets out under 30 HP. He's just gonna TP out. That was so greedy from him. But worth it. So, uh, they're not gonna come dive me under the tower. I'm just gonna take one more CS or something and then he pays for it. <laughs> That's a mistake that you really don't want to be making. It's not that big a deal though. I, I think I actually need a lot more good things going for them to make this game feel good. Oh, Especially as uh, they can just smoke up and do the same thing now, to the tinker. Up. Q actually could be the one to break the smoke. They see Q and looks like they will find a silencer instead. I think this is good. It's better that the silencer dies. They give kill to Ori as well because this way it means Tinker dodges the gank. So that's not that's not a complete loss. A pile I die move. It is sacrificing for your teammate. <laughs> And he's just a silencer. He's gonna get boots, get level 6, and his impact is gonna be through his spells and his map movement as opposed to anything else. Right, so it looks like, okay, OP is actually going for the soul ring over like the, the travels rush. And there are no stacks in the jungle for him. So, what, what are your thoughts on that? Like, for a tinker to go for the soul ring instead of just going for the boots to travel straight? Normally, to me, it says you. You have a way of um, using the soaring to net you something. Oh, hold on. It Looks like they will use the stampede. Boys. Very, very worth it, I think. But on the bright side, you know, Ori doesn't die. That was scary. Bobaka picked up a very casual invis rune. The, he got it from the bottom rune, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. They have so much vision over here. I'd be very surprised if they didn't know that was coming. Because he was really quick on the stampede as well. But Yang, they want to try for him, and I think Centaur knows what's going on. Because he does have a ward there. Yeah, that bottom side of the map. E even the mid lane, it has three wards. Most is very of that passive. is to deal with Night Stalker. The, the one thing I really do have going for them, though, is SF's having a horrible time to start with, and their free cores are uh, all doing in and around each other, which is a pretty good thing. They're all gonna need a certain amount of farm in the early game at least. You'd expect the Magnus to taper off, but 
Him having a earlier blink timing is going to help them a lot. I mean, we did say that in the previous game. XXS, he had a, like, what, a blink and arcane boots by 10 minutes in the previous game, but I mean, look how that turned out. So. That was not his fault, though. Yeah, that wasn't his fault. He played about as well as he could. <laughs> yeah. Oh, trying for the Korea hit. One more hit. He knows someone is there. Slada. That's a pretty yellow Korea. Won't, won't get the crouch into burning. Yeah, so. Go for it. Go for it, and you can do it. Run. No. He had it. Why did he cancel? Oh, he canceled at the last minute. So they're going to know that, it, that he's going to do Roshan right now. This is a very risky move from N. Is it? Uh, I mean, I'm not really sure how they punish. I mean, they can just go and contest the Rosh, can they? Ow. Yes. Like, they have a slot ass. He's just... He's zonal. He's level 4. I mean... Uh... I don't know. Alright, so... How does walking into the pit work out, though? You're a life stealer, okay? You okay. walk into the pit. Okay. You, you press rage. They use their stuns. Then Ursa hits you a few times instead of hitting Rosh. And unless Roche is really your bro and bashes him like three times in a row, mm -hmm. that ends badly for you. And okay. the rest of his team are not in a position to help at all. Uh, that was a very simple call from them. Okay. And uh, now they can set the tempo of the game a bit more, play a bit more aggressively. They will go for a dual smoke between Tron and End. Probably hit to the bottom lane. If they can slow down XXS's blink timing, that'd be good. But looks like they will find Q's themselves... Up. Q, learning from Pile, I die, and he will go down nice and easy to end. Die, die, die. Affirmative. Sad game for him. He still has more uh, net worth than Tuan, though. I'm not quite sure how, actually, but it, sometimes things are a mystery. Illusion. So now, looks like they still want to go to the bomb. They're using the RP for this. Skewer under the tower, but the stampede, it's okay. Angry Bear gets the kill, and Yang gets out. And that was such a sick bait. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's so, RP on cooldown, dagger slowed. That was a big win for VG. If they can get the tower off it as well, it just Radiant's sets the pace of the game for them very attack. nicely. Because End will be able to finish his dagger after this. Presuming they can get it, the rest of his team's kind of left him alone down here. Mm -hmm. So they might not be able to finish it off. But any aggression they can make pay off. It just It kind of double dips because they're making a lot of space for the Shadow Fiend. So he's getting farmed meanwhile. And if they get any good outcome on their side, they're just winning across the map. Okay. Oh, meanwhile, Tinker, yep, he didn't complete the soaring. He just went for the Ring of Region first. He's going to get that Boots of Travel after killing off this. Yep, there we go. 11 minutes Boots of Travel, not too shabby. Yang's still halfway to a Blink Dagger. SF is basically on a Wand and a Wraith Ban. It's not satisfactory, he's in the bottom half of the net worth. Yeah, he's having a lot harder of a time catching up than I thought. Boboka popping the night time. And immediately HYM is, I'm afraid of the dark. He runs all the way to the tower. And he wants his blink. But they're in position to punish if uh, they dive him. Crystal Maiden and Shadow Fiend also rotating to the top. This could be this could end badly, but burning his rage. So I don't think it should be that bad of a situation. He's gonna go for the rune. Yeah, he can always there. get out. They don't have, oh they do have Stampede, but they wouldn't have been able to catch up. Still trying to go for Bobaka, or they can just transition this into a tier one push. Towers are probably in the name of the game for them right now. Mm -hmm. I don't see any way IG can contest, even if they have the blink on mag. They just need too many stars to align. Using that void, and um, this is where Tinker things becomes very annoying with the missile spam and the march. He's just gonna keep doing this to try and stall. Oh well, they're actually content just backing off. I thought they'd try and maybe force a fight there, but I suppose they don't really have everything they want for that yet. But they probably want the blink on both the Centaur and Slada before they start YOLO diving towers. Mm -hmm. Because if Ursic just goes on his own, he's gonna get slowed and maybe the fight just goes really horribly even with a Stampede. Agreed. And I think they identified... They will definitely have a much better time. 
forcing fights, not with just an Ursa Aegis. Otherwise, they lose too much, and next thing you know, Tinker gets crazy big because he's already on the soaring, so he's just gonna keep doing his thing, you know, he get bigger and bigger. XXS with the blink, they want to debut this blink dagger, blink RP. If they can find a slaughter, that's a big win. Oh, they know he's yeah, there he, alone. He's 1800 gold, pretty close to his blink. See how greedy he gets. Oh, HYM, HYM, hello, my friends. Where are you going? And of course, with the last one, I think they have enough damage to kill him off. Yeah, you can't bottle him oh. up. Oh, there we go, the shockwave. What a spoiler. And Q is going to get plus two. That's his tranquil is completed. And Burning died on the other side of the map, though, so he good did? trade Wait. overall. Wait, how? I'm guessing that was half of the stampede use. With, okay. uh, I was watching the bottom side like you were. My bad, I suppose. I should have looked at that shit. But I'm tired. Oh, it's okay. It's all good. Thank you for joining. And 73. VG Gaming, despite having the kill score advantage, it seems like a very narrow lead because of the power spikes. Which I and you know, IG, they still have yet to really show off of hitting their timings yet. We haven't seen Burning rotate as much as he would like. He still doesn't have the armlet as well. Uh, they're just not looking to fight at all. They they want as much resources out of the map as possible while uh, not going towards the enemy heroes. And I think that's their game plan for the next five ten minutes. It, it all depends on like how much pressure BG put. I think the the fact they were able to defend their top tower wasn't like a huge deal because the tower is an important tower. It's more of a you know any kind of map control is good with Tinker. Mm -hmm. The more towers you have in your game, as he gets his blink, the better. Because it, it just becomes so annoying. And VG do have a really good lineup of dealing with it, just because they have so many gap-closing heroes, and they're all pretty tanky. Oh, that was really good from Ori to help out, you know, help HYM get that blink. Now he has it. They can go really crazy right now. You, can, you have someone else to set up for the Ursa as well. So, that's just something really big. And we might see VG yep. go for a smoke soon. No real reason not to. They have all their initiation items. Is under and Shadow Fiend's at a attack. point now where he's kind of back equal on net worth. You'd expect him to be a bit higher, but he had a slow start and the Earth has been thriving in his absence. So tier 1 mid is the name of the game. The Tinker is not set up as of yet, so if BG can flank with a ward and maybe get a good initiation, it could go really, really well for them. Oh, they know the fight's gonna come around mid, so they look. Oh, at they the, can get the Tinker. Look at the flank maneuver coming up from IG. They pop in nighttime, looking for Ori, but no, the crush initiation. They won't take down the life steal immediately with the global signs. It will not be enough to save him. And now the stampede out. They're gonna try and run away from this, and the RP catching the three heroes. Where's the follow up though? Now screw it back under the tower, and there'll be the death of XXS. Ori. Gonna bring someone down with him, it seems. He's still alive. 100 HP gets out. He's dead. Arcane Curse. I think he's gonna die here. Yes, he will. So, Killing Spree going the way of Q. Young. Okay. Well, they could have defined saving him for now. And that's gonna be a 4 for 1 trade. Very, very worth Radiant's it here for, <laughs> for VG Gaming. Yeah, they'll be very, very happy with that. I don't think IG will mind too much because they hold the tower and the Tinker doesn't die. Mm hmm. Yeah, they, they'll chalk that up as a loss, don't get me wrong, but holding the tower is a big deal in these kind of games. The longer they can hold that, the better. It, it's hard to explain why without like boring people and talking for 20 minutes. It's okay. Well, this, these are some things. This is just Dota, right? Like, you have to learn these tiny details, they all add up. And especially to Tinker, like, because I told you, I studied Tinker, so I know what you mean by you need to keep the towers up. People think like Tinker is good at holding high ground, but these towers, they help a lot. It's more for the rest of the team than the mm -hmm. Tinker, because the Tinker can always go to where the farm is. Yeah. But if the Tinker is farming the waves that come to your tower, the rest of your team is on nothing at all. Okay, oh, Whereas, well, XXS in the wrong neighborhood. Crush amplified stomp. He just stomped into the ground. Splat. He was definitely not looking at his hero right there. I mean, his blink wasn't available. Oh, hold on, uh, the Mr. Crush OP. He's gonna show their blink now. And, well, you talked about how once they get their blink daggers up, they'll force the fight. This is what VG Gaming are doing right now. I don't expect them to stop anytime soon either. Unless IG takes some really convincing fight with Global, mm -hmm. which, again, is really, really hard for them to do. 
Gets the tower denied, but N, he was thinking about going for that hit. And now they can slowly make their way into the tier 1 top, or... Yeah, they can do go to tier 1 top before waiting for Roshan. Man, I don't feel safe TPing to this area of the map where VG are at, at all. Like, IG, one person goes in, they're dead. Pretty much, and that's why they are not even attempting it. If they want to send a support up and maybe try and delay the push, it's just like, it's not worth at all. When you look at OP, he's taken to cutting the creep wave so they can get the tier 1. And I think the next big item power spike for them would be Bobka's Agonims as well, but that's going to take a long time. You look at, look at Bernie. He, he went back for the Midas. Yeah, I think that's a... Uh, it... They know their win condition is to play the game later, so... I like the armlet early because it, it gave them the chance to take a fight if VG maybe messed up or if they found themselves in a really good position. Okay. It's also a really just good farming tool. But going back for the Midas is uh, tell the... They want to play for the later game because they're all going Midas. Okay. Uh, I actually didn't notice how farmed the Night Stalker was. He's doing really well. He could be a big turning point. Because his axe mm -hmm. will probably come around the same time Tinker gets his, maybe even earlier. And if they can combine those, they might be able to win a fight off it. Vision is absolutely oh. massive. HYM, he, he did put a Tinker ward. He almost got oh, the he cool. almost got the crush onto the Tinker, but the March did quite a ton of damage, and they're gonna ping yeah they're pinging it out. Tron alone yeah. at the top. He has a Tinker ward there as well. Wait, he is oh without no. team though, so... Oh, hold on, wait. Actually, that wasn't... That wasn't, like, VG's Tinker Ward. That was actually... O <laughs> that was just OP's ward. It's a good ward to have. It is. Helps you, especially against the Slaughter Initiation. And now they... Yeah, they know. Roshan's up yeah, as I mean, well. People are always going to set up in the trees mm -hmm. and hope to catch you. If you miss Blink and don't get into, like, one of the crevices and you actually get into a path. So let's talk about Shadowfiend now. He we haven't talked about him much. You said that his farm, you know, it's been a bit underwhelming considering the nature of the hero, but also because he had a really slow start. So if there's double damage, maybe they can look to take a quicker rush and for another objective. But will the BKB be a huge item for him? Like, I think it's just like the timing around it all. <laughs> He's really far away from it right now, so. They might be able to give the major thing just go. Because Ent has BKB yeah. now. Oh. So he doesn't need an Aegis. Okay. Giving Bobaka the scare. And they also have the pipe now, so they're they're gonna be able to get a creep wave into the tower and if they have any sort of vision, it becomes really scary for IG to defend. Unfortunately, they don't actually have any wards on any of their heroes, and they only have, I think it's one in stock. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the shop is actually broken and just not showing me. No, they're actually out for two minutes. So, they have one ward on the map, and it's not really a useful ward. They need much deeper vision than the one they have in the mid lane. If they want to secure any kind of fights. Oh, HYM, he knew the silencer was in the neighborhood, and Q immediately TPs out. Uh, but they haven't had much chance to invade the jungle as well, seeing as Invictus Gaming, ever since they got the Midas, you know, they've been kind of kicking back. But no, HYM, cheaping to the shrine, that's very risky, but they should know that he's all alone. I have a really nice vision of the area. Oh, Bobaka has Between the, the wards and, and the Ags. Yeah, this is um, by far the most game-changing thing for their lineup. If he can... Uh, I honestly think the mag should forgo Midas and just buy him a gem. But he could probably farm up the gem, and it doesn't matter if they take a few minutes to get it. Because map control is going to be so key for them. VG's lineup is very heavily reliant on knowing when and where to take the fights. So, oh, oh. and this is actually going for a Vlad. Uh, I guess this is it's pretty okay. Oh, top lane, they do kill Yang who was waiting inside the trees. So you can see that Aghanim's already paying off, and he's gonna get a gem very soon. But I mean, back to my point, I was talking about like... Wait, who was, Yeah, okay, I was referring to... For example, one of them, like Shadowfiend. What's his next item, like, after the BKB? 
he could even for go BKB because he has an anxious. But with Tinker getting oh. Ags out soon, I think you have to get it at some point anyway, so he probably just gets it. And then, I think it really depends where the game's at. If they're at a point where they have an Aegis and they can push high ground, probably Butterfly, Scaddy, some stat-based item. If the game becomes at a point where it, the map is extremely split, you might even see Shadow Blade. Sure, it's not as effective against Night Stalker, but mm -hmm. maybe one pick off can win you the game. Okay. So I think it really depends how the next 10 minutes go as to how he itemizes. Because now he's at a point where he's getting the farm you'd expect a Shadow Fiend to get. So the world will be his oyster in about 5 minutes. Well, Ursa completed the Vlads. Usually we see the Mask of Madness, but I think this synergizes pretty well with Slaughter and not to mention Shadow Fiend. The extra lifesteal, the, or the aura it helps. So. Now they're invading Team the jungle. Player. Yeah, which is a good thing. And now they're gonna go for the tier 2 tower bottom lane. His next item is going to be the Deso. I mean, we talked about this before as well, like from the C games we cast it together, where it's great for sieging. And on top of that, you have a Shadow Fiend. Oof, it's. People will melt very quickly, especially burning on this lifestealer who. He's actually going for a Manta style. Just to get rid of the amp. For the most part. It's also good at uh, manipulating us as target team. So they get the tier 2 bottom and IG very afraid to really push out this lane. Like, yeah, the tier 2 towers are not going to be too easy for them to defend but high ground still pretty easy. Like we, we pretty much saw how IG, they were very mixed. They were, they were just like grouping around this area. I saw in the minimap, they were like walking. They were thinking about going to tower, they backed off, went back again. They're like, eh, I don't feel too safe. Yeah, there's a lot of jump, so. Mm -hmm. It's hard to catch even Tron, if, if you're the lifestealer, because he has a four staff and now a solo crest in the quick buy. Wow. You don't, you don't usually see solo crest coming up on Crystal Maidens, do you? No, you normally see mobility or glimmer, but. This is, uh, it's all kind of combining into a timing. Solar Crest is one of the most annoying items to play against as a hero that wants to right click. Especially um, Lifestealer. Co yeah, considering it's like two minutes until mm -hmm. night time and they're going to know the Night Stalker ults down if they're keeping track of it. This is like one of few windows they're going to have to play really, really aggressive. And I think IG read this perfectly because look at where the lanes are and look at where the heroes. They're playing so far back. Ages if just they can expired. wait like 10 seconds, they're gonna have night time and they're gonna have their vision back. They know. HYM being very patient. Oh no, he was scouted out daytime, the smoke broke. So now they'll pop the nighttime. Bobaka moving forward and VG Gaming will be on the retreat. They don't feel safe, they don't have the vision advantage. This does go to IG. So pretty smart read from both teams. They understand each other's timings and the respect nature of the draft, so no fight for now. It's a long con though. They force the ulti out now, then it kicks into daytime for a few seconds, goes into... Actually no, that doesn't even work because the ult is going to be back up. I hate playing against this hero so much. I think it's like a nightmare for any pub. Even, especially for Tinker players usually, but seeing as they're on the same team, you know, it's pretty okay. Tinker did go for the it's... Ags. Ooh. VG is going to be in for a very tough time. Yeah, it, It's so much worse in like a real game though, because you actually use the vision as opposed to in pubs. Like For now, you have a minute where it's daytime and he has no ulti, but you're in such a defensive position on the map by the time you actually get out, it's pretty much nighttime by the time anything happens. Nighttime kicks over, his ult's back up. You. You just don't have a window where you can punish the vision. Oh, they know the Magnus. It's they know where Magnus is. They know where XXS is. Ooh, no, this ward. I think this ward actually gave them vision just at the very tip, the one in the jungle. Like, it, sh it showed them the rotation, I think. But they weren't even smoked up. They just walked in. Coin for me. Uh, which ward? Uh, the one in the ra Radiant Jungle. Yeah, this one. I think it spotted the Crystal Maiden because she walked a bit to the left. She wanted to go up here to put the ward, and I think that's how he knew, because he immediately blinked out and skewered for the TP. 
Yeah, and that awesome sick game sense. And now the counter smoke. With yeah, nighttime it. ticking round. They have an infest bomb too. Night Stalker all the Mike way in needs front. needs to use his Midas. Please, dude. Midas. Efficiency. No. No. <laughs> it, it, it's in his mind. It's way more important to like a not show if there's any wards there, and b look for the gank. It, it hurts to watch, but it doesn't matter that much. But this just shows how both teams they really res you know it's just respect for each other's draft and the way it works. So this is one of the huge differences I feel between a competitive game and a pub game in general. This is even a difference. Oh, I think they saw the crystal maiden. They know where the CMS. They could be going for the plane now. Bobaka is all the way into the trees. They don't know where they are. The missiles will scare them back. XXS. I think it they can maybe fight under a shrine, but no idea. Let's <laughs> even four staff. They're way too far out. I actually felt like OP shouldn't have used the missiles. I think if they were a bit more patient, VG Gaming was slowly moving towards the south. It could have happened, but yeah, I actually agree with that. But hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Yeah, and at the same time, like, you know, think of it as a Magnus, he doesn't have a force staff. There was no way he could have gone for a longer range initiation than he would have liked. So, it's such a pity. He's poor, man. Yeah, it, it's, it's not an if. Like, there are many ifs right now in the way this game is developing. So far, so pretty okay. They take care of the ward behind the tower as well. And they just go back to farming. If anything, I feel this is one of those games. They wait for another Aegis before they try for another objective. Yeah, it's just windows, right? Like, uh -huh. As you were saying about the pub reference, this is even a difference between like tier 1 teams and tier 2 teams. Mm -hmm. You see how it's literally like playing chess. The one team smokes. Oh. Tried for the crush in the last one, he's just gonna force staff his way out. But hold on, look at Burning. He did use the opening wounds of the Tron, who does force staff forward. You can see the appeal behind the force staffs. Great against heroes like Lifesteal. Yeah, that's tried and true. Yeah, th this is at the point of the game. IG finally start hitting their stride, and they're completely dictating their momentum right now. I think VG can still win a fight if they have some form of vision or just a decent jump. But so hard. However, to getting that is yeah, it's near impossible. If IG don't clump up or make a misstep, then VG don't have that option. Like, if anything, despite having all these blink daggers, because of the Tinker and you have the Night Stalker, I feel like these heroes do need BKB. Um, they do have Santa Rag, so, so maybe they could do some clowny play. But that's a lot of damage. Well, if Vichy's like pushing up here, oh, you they can wanna try. I think here. they want to force the issue here. Bobaka, he does give them good vision. X says with the RP onto two. The global silence comes out right now, but the four staff where they're fighting under the shrine, and he's gonna start right clicking away onto Burning, but the rage is up there. But Burning with the amplifier onto him, looks like he will go down here to the right click from N, and all they will find the silence. Q also goes down, and after a long time of no fighting, VG says, "Screw it, we found it." Whoops. Oh, I actually found them, and then realized, oh shit, this isn't good enough. I think he almost got free hero RP, but did someone actually blink out of it, or did he just miss? I feel like there should have been free heroes in that RP. That might have changed the fight, but regardless, it's like... Tinker wasn't really there, he was TPing in, but the RP was just a bit too quick. Like, in that aspect, it's a very it's very hard to synergize in that sense, because it was it's really it's a really tough call. When the Stampede is there, and plus, don't forget, it's an Aghanim's Stampede. I didn't even notice he had the Axe. Uh, I mentioned it before the oh, fight, right, okay. yeah, it's like... For every bit of initiation and vision that IG have, they lack that much in damage as well. Burning doesn't do a lot of damage right now. He's building to survive and deal with the Ursa as much as he can, and he's suffering for that. And unless Tinker gets three or four rotations of spells off in a fight, SF's gonna do more damage. So if, you, if you're looking to initiate with an RP and burst two heroes down and Peachy live, then you're in the ship because they're gonna be able to hold through that. And now they have an Aegis. They will probably be able to clean up these tier twos without any contention. <laughs> and then it all just becomes, can they get a tier three? Can they get the shrines? Maybe get a good high ground Radiant's fight where maybe Tinker has no buyback. Attack. They could feasibly end the game with this Aegis if uh, IG screw up. But they've been playing pretty 
well, at least the Tinker has, positioning wise. He hasn't been getting caught out. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's really died besides the laning stage, have we? Yeah, he's currently 1-1-3. One, one, but despite having the good positioning, we still can't let go of the fact that he hasn't really gotten the damage out like we're so used to seeing. Oh, that's just down to the lack of fights. Mm -hmm. So now Malakar, uh, oh, that laser bouncing around. Ooh, he tried for the stop, but the scuba back and max success. They've caught somebody. Centaur gonna be four staffed out. Nicely done from end, but the laser is going pew pew pew. That's fine. Oh, everyone's reloaded. It is gonna stampede out looking for the laser. Doesn't connect from the creep bounce. So that's a really close shave. If anything, they they do need BKBs on like I, I feel like even the centaur needs a BKB, but he's going for a Lotus Orb. I think Lotus is a bit better on this hero, mm -hmm. but the important heroes have BKBs. The Ursa and the SF. And if they can actually get to a point where either one of those initiations from Centaur or Slardar latch, or they get into some kind of run at you with Stampede on and latch, they can make those initiations work. And they have enough time on the Aegis to push down a lane and go again. There's three minutes left. Is it alright to say that IG, or rather, sorry, VG are on the clock? Because you're going up against a Tinker. This guy, he can, as long as he keeps stalling and you know, burning is going to keep getting fat. You can see he already has a Crixilis, before, maybe for Bloodthorn later on. A Basher is on the way. He thought about the Assault Curse but when decided against it. And Night Stalker is also like, he's going to have a BKB up pretty soon. Oh yeah, they're definitely on a clock. Tinker is the late game carry here. And considering he has the Light Stalker to enable him, his game becomes a lot easier just based on this hero. But I don't think they're really on a clock until maybe the ages after this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, Joyam, he's got the crush, he's got the corrosive face. Q, with the Stampede, they're gonna slow him down, but he four staffs. Is there a bash? The Frostbite's gonna cancel, and that's gonna be the death of Q. So they do get one pick off, no global silence. Is this that, is this that window of opportunity to break high ground? Especially where the lane is, it damn well could be an attempt. Tinker can set up all he wants, but... I, I think if VG really want to brute force it, they could. But, as we all know, Chinese teams risk-reward. It's all how they evaluate, and they play a lot more clinical. And they don't deem it's worthwhile. And they might even find a nice talk with a gem here, but... Fortunately, nighttime vision with his ult is like oh, or 500. Dyer's top tower okay. is under attack. Not the most relevant hero to have BKB on, though. I feel like he does hit kind of hard with empower, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Or like just having the silence miss rate against heroes like Ursa, because if his BKB is down, I believe his BKB is like what? Oh, it's actually still nine seconds. I thought. It... Okay, yeah, yeah, the lack of fights that explains, but. That Void still, you know, just having the miss rate from the Silence as well, the Crippling Fear. That's going to be really big against Ursa. I have a feeling the fight's going to be over in BKB durations at this stage though. So as the game goes on, yeah, for sure. It's going to make a difference. Uh, they know where this Night Stalker is, but <laughs> I don't think waiting. they have the means to jump him. So now... HYM going for that Shadow Blade play. He knows that's just an illusion. He's gonna follow him. <laughs> an illusion's just like, what? Okay, so checking for wards. Yeah, they just wanna they just wanna starve out IG, which is it's not a it's not easy to succeed in doing that because you're going up against a tinker. And he's going for the bloodstone. I'm not sure how I feel about that item. I kinda of feel maybe the hex would be better, but he it's just too risky to get into that kind of positioning, anyways. I think he needs Shivas. I mean, I, I'm no Tinker player, but I, I feel like this game is mostly about manipulation of the map as opposed to team fights. And also, Shivas gives you a lot more survivability because he, he normally gets a decent amount of health, especially with the talent. And it, you could also say Eve like Dagon and just try and stop the pushes that way. Dyer's 
get them to half health before they get to the towers. Regarding the Ursa, is Aghanim Scepter really gonna help him? Not like an MKB or an Abyssal Blade? It's good to take off like the laser debuff and other things. I don't know, Ursa's one of those awkward heroes where he likes a lot of three to four and a half thousand gold items in his inventory. Well, I suppose two to four and a half with like the blink and the Vlads. He gets six slotted very quickly. Other than like a hex, I don't really see many better options. And I say hex instead of basher just because of the cast range. You don't always get the luxury of blinking on top of someone. Now they will go for an infest bomb. IG, they have identified they can't really stay inside for long. They need to make something happen. If they can so, fight around the shrine, it should be pretty good. Yeah, I think fighting around the shrine is currently the best option for fighting. But it's risky though, it's very risky. They're approaching near each other. At least you definitely know what's up if you look at like. Oh, who's the Notron's dead. Where. Does he go for the Blink Skewer? He puts the ward down. Looking. Oh, they get the crush. Oh, they if they can kill the Night Stalker, it'll be pretty big. Looking for the Stomp. Doesn't really land there, but the laser's bouncing around. But the BKBs are up, and the Bobaka looks like he may just lose that gem right there, right now. Ooh. No, he's actually going to run this one off. Ursa. I think he is. Oh, not the crush is there, anyways, and they lose the gem. Big stuff. So they lose. No, two. bye bye. But they do have the buyback on on silence that they could still try for the double chance to force a fight. Lasers in March will be there to stall the push. Yeah, they still have cheese on the SF though, so he can go down. Radiance but don't want to waste it like that, so attack. they just back off. Alright, still a pretty big fight. At least you yeah, get it's a big win for them. <laughs> so you have the gem. So both gems this going to VG here. now. I don't think IG have the chance to buy a gem yet, do they? Okay, hold on, yeah, it's back off cooldown. Yeah, they bought it ages ago, so... Unfortunately, Roche is two and a half minutes, which I don't think VG will be too happy about. But their game plan is definitely based around stalling for this Roche and going again. If they can save this cheese as well, and they can get like double cheese and an Aegis, that might just be enough to like brute force the game. Okay. Especially if Tinker doesn't have a buyback, which maybe it gets to the point where he's just about to finish his Bloodstone and he values that more. Uh, Bloodstone is probably one of the better items to finish though, even though he is leveling up his Dagon. He just has Bloodstone in his quick buy for whatever reason. Mm, I want to talk about his talent, like he went for 225 hel health against the spell amplification. Wouldn't you want to take the spell amplification since he hasn't been dying in these fights, you know? Uh... I think it's it's such a small amount of amp. I don't know. I, I feel like I'd always go health, and I think most of the Tinker players I watch have always gone for the health as well. Okay. Oh yeah. It, it's just they might bump into each other. Like pop the night time, and they want to get out immediately. I'm sure. I'm sure Burning saw that they were really close to each other as well. They saw the dragon move out, and they're just waiting for Roshan. They know it's almost up. Both scouting at the same time. But, I mean, back to your point, you were saying that Tinker players, they usually go for the health, but what is the reasoning behind it? Why would you not take the damage? Because when you do get caught, you can play your way out of it in a lot of situations. Sometimes it's just having the health to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain, but I feel like it just... The 4% is so little. If you ever die because you don't have 225 health, which is a decent chunk from a talent, then you'll kick yourself for it. It's not like you're getting extra kills because of spell amp. Okay. At least in 99.9% .9 of situations, there's always a justification for everything in this game. I, I think it all just comes down to preference. Meanwhile, I, I don't think I've ever seen. Hold on, Q getting jumped part. again. Hey, try him with the bashes. Of course, the laser's gonna get a bit of bounce around. They're just trying to do whatever they can. Oh, look at OP. That was a bit of a shock for the Lotus Orb. And meanwhile, I want to talk about Burning. He went for the Daedalus. He he did have the Basher and the Quick Buy, but he went back, completed Daedalus, and now he's gonna go for an Assault Queras. Uh, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on this? Like going for the Daedalus instead of completing the Basher? It definitely helps his farm speed a lot, which 
is proving to be a pretty big deal this game as he's managing to surpass his Tinker and stay mm -hmm. on par with an SF who's taking more of the map than he is. Or at least in theory. But um, I think this is just late game optimization, right? He's critting for like just over a thousand with power. That gives him a chance to man fight Ursa outside of Ursa all pretty comfortably. And you can shoot through the rest of the heroes pretty easily. Popping the night time. The, they oh, they know the life stealers there holding. They saw the ward. I'm pretty sure they saw it. And Bobaka staying at the very edge. He's gonna try and break the smoke. He broke the smoke onto end, and now they're gonna know. Meanwhile, just taking care of the ward. Immediately four staffs down. This is such an intense moment between the two teams. They know what's going on, and I think they want to chase. IG, they're feeling confident. Do they have the refresher over yet? No, they do not, not yet. So okay, and Roshan's up now. Both teams circling around the pit. Missiles right, flying it's just out. Just a game of cat and mouse. And VG, Mexican standoff. They do not feel confident about taking this Rosh. Yeah, they shouldn't either. The vision just makes it way too cancerous with the rocket spam and stuff for the Ursa to sustain. Mm -hmm. And the waves are also still like quite decently in their favor. It's pretty evened out. Doesn't really favor any side. VG Gaming seem very unsure about what to do. Do they take the risk going into the Roshan pit? I don't think they can, but they need to do some kind of bait where they force them to answer the Ursa in the Roche pit because they do take it so quickly. And then to force the fight off it. Because I still think they win the fight here if they play it well. They have vision in the Roche pit because of this Ags. And just like that, do they actually think about trying to steal the Roche themselves? Getting the silence onto the Centaur. And both teams, like you said, cat and mouse, cat and mouse. No one dares to initiate on anyone. Blinking to the Roche pit, thinking for a crush. Let me for stomp. Yeah, this positioning favors IG quite heavily though. They go back in. They want to go for the skewer out. Looking for the RP. Oh, only finds one though. And XXS doesn't really die. Yusuf does himself up into the air, but a stampede. And OP actually does finally get himself his first kill. And bang, bang, bang. Look at all that laser bouncing around. Not killing That's anyone. He's out of back. mana. He needs to get out, but and go straight for OPK. Get the bash. Oh, more than enough damage to Corrosive Phase. And that's going to be VG Gaming finding themselves another Roshan. OP buying back. They do not want to give this up. They want to go back in. XXS, let's go back in for the ages. Doesn't steal it. Picked up by N. Young, the stomp. Perfect timing. OP can't really kill him off. Out of mana, and he's just going to blink out and TP out. You not sure where you're going. Last one, it's N. He's okay with that. And they have the shrine to go back to believe. No, they do not. But they do get the ages, so that's a really big win for VG Gaming. Forcing the Tinker to buy back. They kill him off one time, that's high ground, that's game. Yeah, and they've got six minutes to do that in. Well, just under because of uh, having to go back and such. But now they have like such a huge legitimate win condition. They just need to stampede into their base, find the bloody Tinker, and kill him. And they found, saw how easy that was. Like, he melts. He has no defensive items outside of uh, being able to blink away. Mm -hmm. Which is not so easy when um, a nurse is in your face. I'm not sure why he went targeting the centaur in general. I'm not sure whether he was really like, you know, it's out of respect. You want to cancel his blink or whatever, but like, you know, he has almost a heart. He has an axe. He has the lotus orb. He has the pipe. Yeah, he's tank. Yeah. He's the raid boss right now, but Tinker is just spending so much time using his Dagon into the Centaur, maybe because he was like the nearest target. I felt he could have gone for the Ursa or something, but I mean, do you think it was probably worth? down to the nearest target thing? Okay. You, you definitely want to be like I think Slider is his main target. SF, it doesn't really matter as much now because he's got the MKB, so lasers are not an issue. Didn't have that that fight though, so if you could have lasered him outside of uh, BKB. And forced him to use it and then kite it would have been this good, but handy. right now, like, I didn't think this would be the case actually, but because of how low impact the Tinker is in the actual fight, sure you can annoy them through spam, but you can't actually just go in and do what Tinker normally does, which is blow up a hero, because Fichi is such a compact unit right now, and if you go into that, it's practically spelling your death if the mag doesn't save you very quickly, and Burning's just getting kited all day because there's four staff stampede. He has no form of lockdown himself as he hasn't gone for a basher. None of his team have stuns outside of an RP, which is a huge issue for him actually. Which I know you mentioned in the draft, but we haven't really touched on since. Now, N gonna start tapping away into the tier three. I think it's about time. 
The load is not going to be there just to send it back to them. <laughs> oh, they really want to stall this. Tier 3 tower almost falls. If they can take the tier 3 tower, it opens up the shrines, making things really big. This centaur is so fat. What the heck? He's fatter than, this, than the Ursa. Yep. Ursa doesn't farm as quickly as centaur though, so... Oh, he just stands there, takes some damage from the tower. With the Lotus Orb, brings the open wounds back onto burning. So, shrines are open. They pop the night time. Mag has refresher, by the way. Mag has refresher, that, that could be really big. Going for the skewer. They find Yang, they're trying to blow him up. They need to come, but the Global Holy Silence man. now comes out. With the Stampede, nice Lotus Orb usage to dispel the Global Silence. And they will back off, happy with what they got. If anything, they can actually just take the shrine. They're pinging it out as well. Uh, yeah, and they can go back in soon when Centaur regens with his heart. Mm -hmm. Sure, they don't have Stampede, but... I think you trade that for global. What lane's pushing or, in though? I don't think they really care. Because it, it's just creeps, right? And if Tinker TPs there, he's right clicking a tower as a Tinker. <laughs> Do you true. really care? He's a ranged creep. And this is your chance to end the game. There's no way you care about that bottom lane unless like another IG hero is there. And not to mention, let's just remember that Tinker does not have buyback for three minutes. He used it earlier on. This is a big window for them. No global it's silence. Time. 30 seconds, no night time, and there's also Stampede up in like 10. Oh, look at XXS. So RP, oh, he's just going straight for the melee barracks. Bernie gonna try and click away into end, but he pops the rage. He's gonna be A-OK. -okay. Now for the RP, coming in, they get two. They burn the Aegis. Now he's just gonna shrine up OP. Actually gonna die to all roof that MKV. Yeah. Looking for the Requiem of Soul. Doesn't get it off yet, but nice zoning ultimate out from Chuan. And Bernie's gonna be caught inside. He's going down. The buybacks will be forced out, and they're gonna keep on going. Looking for the Magnus. Magnus still has the secondary RP. Doesn't wanna use it just yet, and he's just gonna blink out. And this is gonna be the melee barracks. Now gone. They really want to think about taking a mid tier three. I don't think so. And VG Gaming, they want to think about going back in center. Just standing in the front lines. He's not afraid. He has no fears in the world. He's like, come at me, bro. He's going straight for burning. He's doing right. Taking him away there. Jealous. Now the RP to the back line. Finding through the skewer as well. This is all four heroes are caught, but they don't have enough damage. And that's going to be burning going down. IG still alive. And no, VG Gaming, they pretty much won this fight. This seems to be the GGP. Bobakar him against the well. IG Q's called it. They've had enough. Yeah, that, that pretty anticlimactic end when you think about it, right? Yeah. They just walk down a lane, find the Tinker, kill him. But to Vichy's credit, you know, same thing as game one. I'd say they outdrafted them in some respect in game one. Game two, pretty clear in my opinion. And they managed to control the game in a very convincing manner. Again, very few mistakes. Which was very hard to do this game because playing as a Night Stalker and your lack of vision mm -hmm. with the eminent threat that there's a Tinker, that can tilt some people and make them make bad decisions. But they're proving they can do better than that and they deserve to be a tier 1 team.